Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is David Novak. I have been reading the Gulag Archipelago by Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Just begun, to be honest, although it's taken me a long time to even get 160 pages into the book. The reason for that is I was expecting it to be a novel. Uh, my the thing I had in mind was something like Vasily Grossman's Life and Fate. I didn't realize that it was a work of journalism. Um, so far, mainly the book has been a plethora of anecdotes. This person said that was done to him. Those people had such and such done to them. And it's, it's told in uh, sort of a... Well, moments of sarcasm are interjected. Um, Solzhenitsyn has his own personal slang, I think. So instead of referring to people as people, he'll call them rabbits, which is fine. Um, I believe that the book is getting better. And so I'm going to stick with it. I had seriously considered DNFing it, DNF being booktube slang for not finishing it, or, or at least setting it aside, getting back to Stephen Runciman's Crusades, uh, a three-volume history, and putting off any decision on this until I had finished the Runciman. But at this point, I've decided, since there's just, let's say, the faint tinge of sunlight on the horizon. Dawn may be breaking. It uh, may be getting better, although I doubt uh, the pages to come will offer anything like a glorious sunrise. Uh, part of my reason for having antipathy towards this book is that the subject of communist Russia is not something that I really want to study. Um, and furthermore, I, I was hoping to avoid anything about World War II at this point. I, last year, I read enough things about World War II. That's, that's good. That's enough, I said. But, and so far, this has been um, World War II. His, uh, his incarceration began uh, towards the end of World War II. Um, so far, the book has been, he's very loosely trying to provide a history of the um, establishment of the gulag system. But it's, it's very, it, is the word schematic? It's very choppy. As I said, just anecdotes. Um, uh, a, a, he's not a historian, and a historian's tighter chronological framework would please me more. There is a book by Anne Applebaum issued in conjunction with this three-volume set, which uh, I almost had a chance to get, and I, I passed it by um, because I, I, I knew I didn't want to read a history of the gulag. Reading this, of course, my inclination is if I make it through this, then yes, I want to read it. But of course, I know I won't want to devote the time to it. Um, what is making the book rise a little bit uh, in my enjoyment of it is that Solzhenitsyn is beginning to interject moments of memoir into the story. Um, I am normally not a fan of memoir as a genre, but in this case, because he's not a historian and the, the narrative reads very much subjectively, even though I know that he went to great pains to establish his facts. 
it reads subjectively, and so if it's going to read subjectively, I do want to know a little bit of what happened to you. So at the juncture at which I find myself on page 161, he brings up a point in time when he is at the university. He says, 20-year-olds, we marched in the ranks of those born the year the revolution took place. And because we were the same age as the revolution, the brightest of futures lay ahead. It may not have been the brightest of futures, um, certainly not for all of his classmates. Now they, his classmates, uh, they were all under some pressure to transfer to the NKVD school, the NKVD being the secret service. And he talks a little bit about that. It would be hard to identify the exact source of that inner intuition, not founded on rational argument, which prompted our refusal to enter the NKVD schools. It certainly didn't derive from the lectures on historical materialism we listened to. It was clear from them that the struggle against the internal enemy was a crucial battlefront, and to share in it was an honorable task. Our decision even ran counter to our material interests. At that time, the provincial university we attended could not promise us anything more than the chance to teach in a rural school in a remote area for miserly wages. The NKVD school dangled before us special rations and double or triple pay. Our feelings could not be put into words, and even if we had found the words, fear would have prevented our speaking them aloud to one another. It was not our minds that resisted, but something inside our breasts. People can shout at you from all sides, you must, and your own head can also be saying, you must. But inside your breast, there is a sense of revulsion, repudiation. I don't want to. It makes me feel sick. Do what you want without me. I want no part of it. This came from very far back, quite likely as far back as Lermontov, from those decades of Russian life when, frankly and openly, there was no worse and no more vile branch of the service for a decent person than that of the gendarmerie. No, it went back even further. Without even knowing it ourselves, we were ransomed by the small change in copper that was left from the golden coins our great-grandfathers had expended at a time when morality was not considered relative and when the distinction between good and evil was very simply perceived by the heart. So I really liked the mention of Lermontov there. Lermontov was perhaps the first great Russian novelist. Um, Chekhov said famously, we all came out from underneath Gogol's overcoat, and so I believed for a long time. But now I think perhaps he he could have said Lermontov. Um, Lermontov, I understand, he was a poet and novelist. Um, he, only one novel s survives by him because he died very young, I think, in a stupid duel. Um, and I read it some years ago. The, uh, the mentions so far, there was one to Chekhov and now this one to Lermontov. It adds a, a texture to the, the uh, narrative that I am enjoying very much. Um, it makes you realize that while literature may not have any significant impact upon world events or upon history, 
yet it can have an impact on the individual human soul and indeed help an individual person to navigate uh, horrendous circumstances in which he may find himself, or if not do that, at least help him uh, later on when, as in the case of Solzhenitsyn, he is called to witness them, help to express them, help him to express them. So that is where I stand with the book. It is a slow read for me. Uh, communist Russia is not a subject matter that I have any interest in delving into. I was fortunate enough to spend a day there when I was very young, en route from Singapore to Paris, trying to do a round-the-world trip. Uh, we broke down in New Delhi, and then there was some kind of problem. Uh, it was an Aeroflot flight that caused us to land at the wrong airport in Moscow, and we took a, a bus from one airport to the other, where we were held in a containment area for about a day. Uh, and I got to see enough of the communist system at work and the um, what I am inclined to think of as the inherent brutality to the system. So I thought I would share that with you. I will continue to read the book, but I don't expect to make great progress swiftly. Uh, but I will leave it at that, and thank you very much for stopping by.